How's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Pickups and DylanTalksTone.com. So, as a result of our podcast that you can find at DylanTalksTone.com and um, some other questions, we are doing a series on gain. This is video number two. You can find the link to video number one right about here. And uh, watch that first. We talk about volume versus gain and the difference. So today we want to discuss um, how we the couple. There's a couple of different ways that we can get that kind of that overdriven, compressed, saturated sound that we all love as guitar players. So the way the the kind of the the favored way of getting that kind of overdriven tone um, is is like this because how we discussed in our previous video if we have our guitar signal coming in okay and we have an overall available range that we can raise the amplitude with that given amplifier okay and there's more details about that again in our first video and then we adjust it above this threshold it starts to kind of clip the tops off of the signal starts to compress that a little bit so the, the thing is is that the voltages and everything still change, but they can only fit effectively, cleanly, kind of through a certain size hole, if that makes sense, and then it starts to kind of mess it up. Now, if we're doing that with our amplifier, okay, that means that we would basically set our preamp gain uh, to be fairly clean, and then we would come over here to our master, and we would turn it all the way up um, until it started to clip. Every amp does it at a little bit different place. This one's right about here. It starts to clip a little bit and it starts to get into that real nice tone uh, that we all love. Now the trick, oh, the trick of that though is, for instance, this Fuchs 4 Aces right here is only 4 watts. I can do that in this room and it's not deafeningly loud, right? But this 50 watt ODS down here, uh, it will, it'll cut your head off in a room, you know, like in my office. I can't can't really do that. And you can't really do that on a small stage or a small club stage or um, in many small venue situations. So how do we get around that if all we have is a big wattage amp and we're trying to get that real tube saturation without any pedals or anything? Well, then the next idea to do this, the, the next best thing, would be to remember we can view our guitar amplifier most to most tube amplifiers even if they don't have two channels if they sort of sort of view it as they have two amplifiers in them because they have a preamplifier and they have their power amp okay now those power amp tubes give you the most dynamic range they give you the best sound we all know that but if we can't get our volume levels up to such a state that we can get away with doing that then what we can do is we can take our signal from our guitar, send it to our preamp, and we can drive our preamp to the point of that saturation. And then we can turn our master volume down and see what happens. We've messed up. We've compressed that signal in our preamp. And then we've turned our master volume down so that it's basically come through at a lower volume. It's not the prime way to do it. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong because there are many guitar tones that rely on a driven preamp tone, okay? Um, there are many amplifiers that are designed with that uh, more aggressive, hot, some higher frequencies in there a little bit, uh, a little bit edgier sound when you drive the preamp than when you drive the power amp, depending on your tubes, of course, but I'm speaking sort of in generalities for this video. But then what we can do is have this overdriven tone coming from our preamp and then lessen the volume of our main power amp and have a lower volume. Is that the prime way to do it? It depends on the tone that you're going for, but this is one way to do it, okay? Now, the other way that this can be done, here, here's the thing that, and here's something that we need to remember, okay, is that the power amp in the amplifier being the final stage as it comes to the speaker and goes out to our ears. 
if we do what we want to do with our saturation and our distortion and our overdriven tone in the power amp, it will have the most amount of dynamic range, meaning it will be the most flexible and the most adjustable because we can affect what we put in front of it, okay? The further in the signal chain we go this way, with messing up that signal, the less dynamic range we have because as you notice in this illustration, once we push our preamp into this distortion, we can't get it back clean again, okay? So whatever we've done to that here, when it goes to the next stage, we can't undo, for the most part, what we've done to it earlier in, in the stage, okay? So one of the things that we can do to even gain more flexibility is on all these illustrations up until this point, we have actually been running our volume on our guitar at 10 all the way up just so that we can um, illustrate these points. Now everybody says, now there's a lot of people that say anyway, I just play with my volume at 10 all the time. If you do that, you are giving up dynamic range. You're giving up some flexibility that you have in your signal chain, okay? So one of the things that can be done now is we're trying to keep our volume lower, right? So we've got our master volume down here, sucked down a little bit. Now we've got our preamp right here. It's not clipping. See, we got a clean signal. But this is because our guitar volume is now not at its full potential. So we have it at seven. The preamp is not clipping. And we have a clean signal over here. Now here's something very interesting. This gives us the flexibility to boost it over here if we want, if we have the room and the volume to do so, further boosting it with something in front of it if we wanted to add that, simply by raising our guitar volume to 10. Now we have some flexibility in our dynamic range just with our volume knob. Because if we can now watch this, if we were to adjust our, our preamp closer to clipping, with our volume at seven, then we could bring it into overdrive when we bring it up to 10, and we could clean it up as we come down to six or seven because we're not smashing it down right here yet. And we have a control, our volume control, then becomes not just volume, but also gain. Because it, remember it kind of, hmm, the easiest way to say it is it kind of becomes a gain control as it hits its limit. Right now, that is not totally technically true. If you watch our first video, we'll talk about gain versus volume. But for this conversation, we can actually use this to control how distorted and how saturated, how hard we drive our amp if we set it this way. Okay, so here's a couple of different ideas how we can get dynamic range. Now, this is probably the main uh, the dynamic range, I mean, in the sense of not frequencies, uh, but in flexibility um, from clean to a little bit crunchy to really, really overdriven in how we proportion. If we can visualize what our preamp, typically on some, some amps it's called volume, like on a Fender, and on a Fender amp, this amp over here is called master, okay? So depending on how we proportion these two, and our volume knob, we can uh, get a lot of different flexibility out of it. Just remember this, that if we do the majority of the work in the power amp, it is gonna give us the most flexibility in the rest of the signal chain to do other things with it. Um, because we can put more in front of it. Because remember this, that, and this is the other thing to remember from this video, the further that way you go, and mess up the signal, drive the signal, remember that once it has been pushed into overdrive, it cannot be unoverdrived. You can't clean it back up, okay? So remember that the further way, this way you go to do that uh, in your amplifiers, because the next video we talk about, we're gonna talk about putting a pedal in front of this, and you're gonna see that when we put an overdrive pedal in front of this, it's basically just another little amplifier doing exactly the same thing, but we'll talk about how it all works because then we're gonna talk about cascading gain because we can stack it
based on how we have all this set. So we'll talk about that next time. So gain is fun, but we have to understand, uh, like I said, takeaway from this video I would say would be the further the, this way you go in your amplifiers and you mess up that signal, overdrive it, uh, the harder it is to have a lot of range and flexibility in your tone, okay? Because once it's messed up, once it's overdriven, you can't clean it back up, typically, typically. So that's the thing for today. We will talk to you soon. My name is Dylan. This has been Dylan Pickups and Dylan Talks Tone. Check us out at Dylan Pickups on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, and DylanTalksTone.com. And if you want to come join our, um, our community of kind of tech nerds on social media, you can do that by going to guitartechgroup.com and through there you'll be able to see how you can become part of our free information resource. I hope you all have a great day. We'll see you next time.